One of the things I always get asked is about whether they think the driving age should be put up or put down, made it lower like they're doing America and things. Um, and I've always said I think it should be a bit higher at the moment. I think it's due to people's uh, maturity when they drive behind the wheel because I don't think some people understand um, how driving a car is a privilege and not a right. And there's people that don't realise the impact they create on other drivers on the road. So I'm going to tell you about this crash that happened at an area of Bradford. Um, I won't tell you about, well, name the area because a lot of people know roughly where it is uh, and probably know about the crash. But um, if you can think about um, one car coming down a hill, basically, and one car that was coming uphill. So the car that was coming uphill had two youths in it, very young, um, and they decided to set off from their home address. And for no reason at all, uh, it's probably 200 metres to traffic lights. They decided to floor the car and get to traffic lights and they were probably doing like 60, 70 miles an hour. Gone straight through junction and lost control. There were no reason for them to do it. They weren't racing any car. They weren't being chased. They were just basically, sorry, decided to put the foot down and set off quickly. Coming down the road at that point were uh, Suzuki Alto. The Suzuki Alto contained dad driving, granddad in the front passenger seat, grandma in the middle of the seat and then two young kids, I think about five and eight, uh, on either side of grandma. Um, <clears throat> the Vectra coming up the road basically has gone screaming through a junction across the road and had a head on collision with a Suzuki Alto coming down the road. I've been shouted to the scene and I've attended the scene and I've never known or I've never seen destruction like it in my life. So if you can visualise the scene now, the Vector was upside down in the middle of the road. One lad was unconscious in that vehicle and the other one was screaming around the floor because he had a broken back um, and he couldn't move. The Suzuki Alto parked, well, unparked, was embedded into a wall up the road. The dad of that car was laid over the steering wheel uh, and I think he had significant brain injuries. Granddad in the car was um, projected halfway out of the window of the front passenger seat and he was dead at the scene. Grandma had come through from the back seat uh, with no seatbelt on and hit her head on the dashboard and the head had just peeled open, um, showing all the brain uh, and skull. She was in the back of the car screaming um, and unconsolable. And the two children had been projected out of the car at the moment of impact and they were 50 metres up the road, laid in the road unconscious. I arrived at the scene on my own, single crewed. Um, I got out of the car, um, tried to deal with the people that were stopping in the road because it was such a tight knit area that everyone either knew the people of the, the Vectra or the people of the Suzuki Alto. Uh, within minutes, the road were blocked and there were people fighting at the scene, uh, trying to pull bodies out of cars. And someone had already picked the two children up and taken them to hospital. So they were being looked at a hospital before we could get any details or get them an ambulance. As soon as the ambulances came, they couldn't get more than probably 100 foot towards the scene because bystanders were blocking that scene off. The fire brigade then were behind uh, the ambulances, again, probably 150, 200 feet away. They couldn't get to the scene. So we had family and relatives of each people in the road demanding where the police, ambulance and fire were, but they couldn't get to the scene. Within a couple more minutes, we had ambulance drivers being attacked by gangs of use. Um, uh, we had firefighters being put in headlocks and being thrown around. There were basically an all-out fight between these gangs of use in both parties and the ambulance, paramedics, the firefighters and the police. I went code zero on my radio, the yellow button, orange button, the chicken button, whatever people want to call it. Uh, within a couple of minutes, it was flooded by officers and it took about 40 minutes for us to gain control of the area. Don't forget these bodies are still lying in the roads, they're still hanging out of the cars. Um, and then for some reason, a, a, a dipshit of an officer, chief superintendent or something, just showed up at the scene and started shouting at me like, because I hadn't got control at the scene at, uh, at, the, at the time, and started shouting at me and demanding why we're letting people into his scene and just completely no idea what was going on. Um, and once we got control of the scene, we realised that the Suzuki Alto were actually going to a family party two doors down. And I think it was the cousin's party or his brother's party. So if you think about having a party in your house and you look out your front door of your house and there's your family embedded into a wall, dead, and then 
severely brain damaged and then with the red hanging off or open and kids projects out of the car. Imagine the rage you'd feel uh, and the hurt you'd feel coming out and trying to drop the people out of the Vauxhall Vector in the road. But the Vauxhall Vector people, family, only lived 200 metres away. So they were running up road and everyone was fighting. The attitude of people that think just because you're 17, 18, you've got the right to get in the car and then drive how you want to drive. Um, through traffic lights, wrong side of the road, and not have an impact on anyone else's family, everyone's driving. 99% of all people want to get from A to B in a car, and they just want to go from one journey to another. They don't want any hassle, and they don't want anything to happen to them, but you always get those young, naive people, and that's why insurances go up. But I suppose in Bradford, people don't have insurance because they can't get insurance, because people drive without insurance, crash into you and make off, so your insurance goes up. So we've got this never-ending scale of people driving now with no insurance and no license. So because they're driving no insurance and no license, they think that technically they can go do what they want because the car's not registered to them, no license or insurance. So you can go through traffic lights and not going to get caught. They can go around the wrong side at roundabouts, they're not going to get caught because they'll just dump car and drive off. People have to remember that driving's a privilege and when you do get your license, be jubilant, be happy, but also be responsible for everyone else on the road. It's not just you on the road, there's other people. So think about what you're going to do and drive safely and I suppose that's about that. What's it like for you as an officer coming onto a scene and seeing such graphic like, trauma? Like what's the, what goes through your mind when you see that like absolute carnage? Um, I'm used to seeing dead bodies. Dead bodies isn't an issue. But it, it, they always say like with traffic, it's the dead bodies because it's always done through trauma. It's done through an impact situation. They're either being hit by a car and dragged They've either been in the car and the car's crushed and they're crushing the car. It's not like they've just died at home in bed. <clears throat> so seeing the body isn't really an issue, but it's seeing the impact of the body because that you think, that could happen to me. That could happen to you and your loved one. And you've gone from literally talking in the car and having a nice day, then seconds later you're hanging out of the car dead. Your kids have been projected up road and all because some arsehole, sorry for my language, some arsehole wants to drive a car fast. But when he got in that car, he didn't know what we were going to do, but his actions have started a chain reaction of events. He could have got in car and driven at 30 miles an hour in that car and just passed him, not would have been done. So it takes, it, it takes your breath away, but it takes your breath away in a work situation because first thing you think is every single event I've got to secure, uh, sorry, secure the scene. But then everyone tries to do it, and I understand why, because everyone's got a heart and wants to help. But people just try and pick people up off road, even if they're dead. They try and move them, they try and shake them. Oh, it's my family and try and hug them. I understand that. But if you're not medically trained, you're causing more injuries. They might have a broken neck. You've just lifted them up, you might have paralysed them then. So you're causing more injuries. So um, it's overwhelming, really. Your senses, everything about your senses goes. You, you, it's all heightened. You can feel airs on your neck stand up. Your adrenaline goes. Your taste is like 10 times better, your smells 10 times better, your vision goes into like ultra HD and you're taking so much information on at once. Um, but it's only after that event, it's only when you get back to the station that you come down. And when you come down, you come down with such a force. You, you, you can be in tears, you can be shaking, um, you can just go uh, inside yourself. It's such a bizarre feeling. But what does make the, the impact is, is when you're doing that CPR on someone or when you're doing that, um, life saving first aid and you know you've made a difference when ambulance get there and say if it weren't for you they, they could have died or whatever that's the main thing that, that that you take away from it but then I pass these scenes all the time I pass the scene with the two year old boy I pass the scene with a Porsche I pass all these scenes when I'm out with my kids or I'm walking or and then as soon as you get towards the area it's like a time lapse it's like as soon as you drive towards the area all clouds come over it goes right dark, it goes dull, and everything's frozen. As soon as you go past and you're coming out of the side, all the clouds go. Uh, it's hard to explain, but it's just dark, it's dull. It's like the memory's always there, and every time you drive through it in your car, you're driving through that, that second you can see yourself at the side of the road. You can see the car, you can still see, I can still see the body, I still know what the old man looked like. I still see a mother's head, and it like, it, it honestly looked like a coconut that I just opened. It was just a, 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 a you know, a, a, some sort of nut with a shell on top and you just pull it and it opens, just cracks open like that. It was just like that, but you could just literally put your hand in the gap and press what you wanted. It was just, so I just got, I think it were um, uh, ID uh, cloth in the car. Um, I, I know it sounds stupid for wiping windows, but it was, there was nothing else to push 
on like a compression on it. Yeah, nothing to put pressure on. But I didn't want to press because I didn't know what we were going to do. I when the last time you saw that. So like um, she was screaming and I remember putting it on and she, her putting her hand on her head and I thought, I don't know what I do. It's like a skull that's just open. You just try and do push it back together. Do you think there should be more education? <coughs> drivers or young drivers or new drivers of what the actual results of crashes can be as opposed to like just the technicalities of driving. Yeah, because I just think the, the way I see stuff and this is a lot to do with not the when I say the younger generations, I just think a lot, a lot of people think that life's cheap and I don't think people think of about the impacts that's going to happen. So like there's a lot of people I know that are probably 13, 14, 15 and a lot more mature than a lot of 23, 24, 25 year olds. So it's about the education and showing them the, and I'm being honest with showing the graphic nature of what you've what could happen. And everyone can pick up a mobile phone in car. Everyone can learn, uh, lean over and change the radio. Uh, <clears throat> everyone can go to 35 in a 30 zone, but it's that thing clicking in, you saying, don't do it. I can race you, I can just get through these lights here, but why? You're only gonna say, I think there's a, there's a pole or something that says if one person sets off on a 10 mile journey and goes 30, and other one sets off on a 10 mile journey and goes 45, it, and they're not going on a, on a straight road, it's through town and stuff, you're only gonna get there something like three minutes in front of the other person. So why are you risking 15 miles down for three minutes? It's not like you're gonna get there. Our, and it's, well, it doesn't work out like, it works out of, I'm traveling so much, to, I'm on about going through town and traffic lights and traffic and stopping and starting. So you're not benefiting anything from the speed you're doing. So when people think they're going fast and they're trying to act good going fast, you're just looking stupid. You're just looking naive and you're looking like you don't know what you're doing. So yeah, I think there needs to be more education brought in. Uh, and then I'm not on about being a harder driving test, but I'm on about the maturity level needs to change before they're allowed behind the wheel because you don't know the devastation you're going to cause.